I wanted to talk about Instagram today. Mm. Oh, we've got to give the shout out though to uh, for the guy who in our comments told us why we look so damn orange in our videos. And yes. he said, set, it was Darth Fools who said, set your white balance to 3,700K, which is it. how we really look now. All the comments are like, oh my God, Maddie's a snowman. <laughs> yeah. We're a lot more pale than what we actually have been. Portraying. Yeah, we're portraying. <laughs> we've been deceiving you it's all. all a lie. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for that. I think we fixed it. Um, but let us know. Yeah, I want to talk about Instagram. Because I feel like so many questions are coming through that are directed to us purely about Instagram. I think we've done like a bit of a loop now where it was like Instagram was amazing. Everyone was obsessed with it. Everyone mm. wanted to grow their following. And then everyone kind of got bored of it and went to YouTube, went to TikTok. And now it's come back again. I thought I did think Instagram was going to die. I thought that Same. Because whole... I didn't even use it for a while. Yeah. I thought the whole looking perfect all of the time was mm. done. And I felt like the uh, the features and everything just wasn't really what people were looking for. And then along came Snapchat with their filters. Mm. And then along came, um, okay, there was Vine quite a, quite a while ago. And then TikTok came along. And I thought that that was it. People were done. because I thought that the TikTok content stimulated people's minds so much that you would never want to return to boring old Instagram. Mm. And now Instagram then stole the features mm -hmm. from the likes of TikTok. And the stories came from not Snapchat. Snapchat. So they've never done really anything original, and I have mad respect for that because no. they've done it well. True, true. Even the hashtags thing. I think was, smart, you know, like yeah. work smart, not hard. Yeah, yeah. So, so I thought that after that was going to die, and when you start copying other people's features, you've got to do it very, very well. Mm. Otherwise, you kind of are digging your own grave. Yeah. Because if you don't do it better than the person where everyone is flocking to then you're screwed. Yeah. So, yeah, as, as a company, we started phasing out Instagram, and now... It's back heavier than ever. It is, and it, it's, it's now... They've implemented those features well, and now for artists, I'd say it's become the most important platform mm -hmm. again. Yeah, I think people use Instagram in a way that is like no other platform. You will... If you had like a tracker on your phone to see how many times you opened Instagram, you'd probably be mind blown. It's you open it to check stories quickly, scroll, go through the feed really quickly. You do it in any couple of minutes you have spare. And for artists, that's incredible because you don't have to spend much time on it, but you can gain a lot of traction on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a platform that should be one of your highest priorities. Um, and I go for it. I was thinking that still. We have the problem of artists obsessing over the followers on it, though. Yeah, and views and, like, really stupid stuff rather than, like, comments and DMs and the actual engagement. Yeah. As if, if you've got X number of streams, you should have X number of followers. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that no. at all. It completely depends on your, your content. And, and there's a lot more important things to Instagram than your follower account. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still seeing people buy followers now and Instagram Surreal. have got like they've gone really hard on it they will either block your account or suspend it or they'll just stop pushing you out so you're shadow banned and I don't understand why artists are still doing it I think it's exactly the same as why they would buy Spotify streams mm -hmm. but it, it's absolutely pointless Yeah, and it, for the people you're trying to impress for for one we'll never see your account because it's not going to get pushed out to them but if you think it's going to impress industry professionals if you have 100k followers and i don't know 80k of them are fake and they go to your comments and there's nothing happening you're going straight in the bin then they ask themselves what else is fake yeah it's the most difficult time as well now to fake instagram followers because before they had stories or reels you could fake the number of likes and fake the number of followers yeah. and get some bot-generated comments and that's it. Now, for reels, you're going to have to 
start faking those as well and then start faking your Instagram views. That's expensive. Do you know there's a lot of artists out there, though, who don't realize they're faking it? That's actually mm. something we've never talked about, but yeah, it's actually yeah. quite scary how many artists will come to us. They want a marketing campaign from us mm -hmm. and they say, cool, I've actually built 50,000 followers of my own and uh, I want you guys to get me to 100,000 followers. Mm. And we're like... They have like 10 followers real. Mm -hmm. It's actually scary. And they say, no, 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 I worked with a legit marketing company mm -hmm. and they got me this. Uh, it's 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 fake. Mm -hmm. And then when we, we experiment with it, we run tests on it, it ends mm -hmm. up being fake and we have to break the bad news to them. I think the best way to work that out is um, story views. Mm -hmm. So story views are kind of up and down depending on how many stories you put live that day, how many are actually engaging enough for people to respond to and like and, and share, um, and how often you've been posting in kind of the mm. past like, week or so. And But at the end of the day, you should be getting a decent percentage of people watching. I would aim for 5%. So 5% of your followers viewing, which is totally doable. A strong account will have 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult when you're in a stage where you might only have like 200 followers because that would be significantly higher. But when you are getting your first couple of thousand, you should be aiming for 10, but 5% is still very good. My favorite one, if I can't see their story views, is I look at their poll results. Mm -hmm. So if you... 50-50, <laughs> 50-50. Yeah, I was going to say 80% or 90% yeah. because say uh, we're looking at an artist and we're like, is this fake? This could be fake. If there's two results to the poll and then... It's on 90%. So I get Maddie to vote for probably what is the most popular one. Go. And it goes to 90%. And then I mm -hmm. then vote for the least popular and it goes to 80%. Actually, 10 people voted on that mm -hmm. poll. We know. The bots don't have an opinion. Mm -hmm. So that is how we look if we can't get access to their data. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's just absolutely pointless. Um, but I think it would be cool for us to run over each area of the artist's Instagram account yep. and advise on how you can absolutely smash it. Instagram is a lot easier now due to Reels because in the past we'd always say treat it as a catch net. So people find you on TikTok, people find you on YouTube, people find you on Spotify and once they found you, you collect them on Instagram. That is still true. However, you can also get discovered on Instagram now, which is great. Mm. You might be a suggested account to follow on desktop or on story. They now have it. So if you're going through stories, they're suggested accounts to follow. You might be suggested posts at the bottom of someone's um, feed. And your reels might come up on people's feed or their explore page or all things like this. So there are plenty of opportunities to get discovered if you're using it correctly. I think the basics are something that most artists actually don't even have down. So if you log in, if they, uh, if you go to their account and you look at the display picture, the bio, the highlights, people struggle with that. Mm. And you actually did a full YouTube video on a bio. Do you remember that? Oh yes, that was a while ago. It yeah, probably, I'd say it, it did well. It was, a, it was like a yeah. good, good piece of advice because people just do artist name where they're from. Age linked to my music. Mm. It's like I don't care that you're 23, Stacey. Why uh, are you yeah. telling me this? And I didn't expect that one to do well because, like, it was just a you know, it's just a bio, mm. and I think people would care that much about yeah. it. There's an amazing uh, TikTok creator who I really like who also said that people put out now in their bio mm -hmm. on all streaming platforms, and what a waste of space that is in your bio to say all streaming platforms because she literally said like. Uh, I can't remember the example she she said, but it was like something's going to be, I think it was like Twinkies or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there's some Twinkies there uh, where they're going to be. And they're obviously... It's the best way for a musician to understand out on all streaming platforms, or like out now, something like that. Imagine you knocking on someone's door and saying, hey, there's Twizzlers in the kitchen. There's Twizzlers in the kitchen. There's Twizzlers in the kitchen. And you keep going back to tell them because they just won't go to the kitchen. Twizzlers are in the kitchen it's only enough information to make you act if you already like Twizzlers. This is not about Twizzlers. Telling people where something is doesn't matter unless they already like the thing and they value the thing already. Don't treat them like they already like it when they're just finding out it exists. Let's add on top of that. If you did buy Twizzlers, and let's say I actually like Twizzlers, you wouldn't have to tell me what room of the house it's in. Like, we all know where food goes in the house. Right, like, like, all you need to tell me is that we got Twizzlers. You don't have to tell me where it is. And you're telling me we got Twizzlers 
with the piece of content. Again, not about Twizzlers. Okay? You're telling me the song exists by this video being available, by this video being posted. Meaning, again, not about Twizzlers. We all, like the reasonable consumer knows where music is. Right? We have a preferred platform. We, we know where music is. So you don't have to really say that. And I'm not, like, you can say it if you want, but I'm just saying, don't feel compelled to. Don't, like, don't feel like you have to say it or else. That they're going to be in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. you don't have to say all streaming platforms. She said it a lot better than me, actually. She did, and yeah. I can't remember how she said it, but good try. Yeah, <laughs> it, was a it wasn't even a good try. I, I really liked her content I'll, as well. I'll, I'll she, link was, it in the description. It was good, yeah. I'll link it definitely in the do. She's a good creator. Yeah. And there are not many in this industry with actual like strong advice i like her uh yeah strong advice and also just general humor and also she doesn't upload every single day mm -hmm. which is a bit hypocritical because we're trying to do that right now is mm -hmm. upload as often as we possibly can to give information but what i mean by that is it's just not like content for the sake of content yeah, with her uh, yeah. yeah so she is really good um yeah so the basics I think first, first things first, your your profile picture. Mm -hmm. People don't think that it's that important. They'll just pick something random like the artist logo. I don't like that. What? Yeah, no, or the artwork. No, like just pick something that's of your face, of the band as a whole. The colours, the style, all of that should represent you as an artist. It mm. needs to match on all socials. So your TikTok, your YouTube, your Spotify. It's not hard. Just get a press shot and shove it on. Mm. Also, being mysterious is not unique. No. Stop with this stuff now. Being wanting to be mysterious is is just laziness as an artist, and want that means that you just want to create the music, but you want to pretend you do actually have an Instagram strategy, but really you don't. And I think this whole mysterious thing, like no artist is ever broken by being mysterious mm. and not having a any kind of brand okay you could make the argument for like dead mouse where he's got like the helmet on you don't know what he looks like but now obviously we do know what he looks mm -hmm. like so you could make that argument but that is still a brand it's also an anomaly yeah the, the amount of times people will be in our comments when we'll, we'll say something be like try and do this because this gets results they'll be like uh, excuse me madonna didn't do that yeah. and it's like you're picking one person there's always going to be one person but look at the majority of artists that are succeeding and that we're seeing results with. That's why we give these tips. It's not just like plugged out of thin air. Exactly. I can't stop looking at how pale we are. I also don't know what camera to look at right now. I'm like oh, a crackhead that, going yeah. from each camera at the moment. But never mind. Uh, back to Quality it. content. But yeah, quality. Back to it. The, so artist profile picture, cool. Bio, you can watch Alex's full video, but mm. a quick breakdown. Show people what they're going to get. And if you're like your brand is like a funny guy, uh, like the whole Lewis Capaldi thing, if you just want to call yourself like fat, ugly guy trying to sing like mm -hmm. that is personality. It's showing what they're going to get from the profile. And it's not just plugging, because if they follow you on Instagram or they even on your Instagram profile, why you bother plugging mm. them or like pushing them somewhere else? Try and get them to stay. Mm. And and if you're not necessarily funny or humor is not your brand, then I'm happy for you to go for the genre of music mm. as well. I'm a ex artist making mm. music for people who yeah. are going through this or feeling like that, something mm -hmm. like that. I'm more than happy with as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then highlights. I've spoken about this quite a lot recently. No artist is doing well with highlights. No. They're, they're the highlights of your stories. They're not just a folder to promote. We're seeing far too often like promo, live shots. Some people even share other, like their fans sharing them. So a fan will put something on their story. They'll reshare it. Then they'll highlight it to be like, look, I do have fans. Mm. Like this space isn't that's such a waste of space. Instead, use it to show people what they're going to get if they follow you and they're viewing your stories every day. Since you said that, mm -hmm. I was thinking last night while I was trying to get to sleep on highlights, and probably why I have no Great friends. Great life. <laughs> um, I don't think people should use them. I That's think it's all. a redundant feature on I Instagram. Oh, I look at people's redundant. highlights. No, you don't. Hundred percent, every single time. Give me an example. We're a bit more nosy women, you know. Okay. So, fine. like, uh, for example, you know Jamie and Sophie, who from Maiden Chelsea, right? Like, yeah, she came up with my suggested. I went to her account, mm -hmm. then I went through her highlights. Okay, what kind of highlights does she have? Just like normal girly stuff. And I was just like being nosy. Really? Yeah, and I followed her, and I followed Jamie too, and it's like. 
People so you, want an insight. And if that is giving them access to what they've missed on your stories already, mm-hmm. they, they will. Because people just are nosy. Interesting. I don't look at highlights at all. I, I would you actually. You don't really I, use Instagram I think that a, much, though. It's a waste of space in, in the profile. For you get to, like it. It takes up the distance between going to their profile and going to their. I feed. won't ever scroll someone's feed, and no, I don't think many people do. I do. That's fascinating. I will go to their feed and have a look at what they're posting more than I'll look. And then if they've got a story live, which I do recommend for all artists to have yeah. a story live as often as possible, because that ring people will go and have a look to see what they're going to get. They know you're consistent so, as well. Which is why plugging too much on your story is, is really terrible. Yeah. Imagine I've discovered you for the first time. Your bio is out now. Uh, your feed stuff is all promo. And then I'm like, oh, finally, they've got a story live. What am I going to see? Screenshot of your Spotify. Yeah. You are not getting a follow. Yeah. It needs to be something else. And that doesn't have to be anything crazy. Mm-hmm. Just something that is interesting. Something that shows a bit about you as an artist. And if that's because, like, if that's just you in the studio drinking a coffee, that is something more than you saying, please go through my song. I would also like to comment on why it's important. I've never said this before. Why it's important to create Instagram content. Uh, sorry, have a good Instagram, even though you're not creating content that people are going to discover. Mm-hmm. And that is because, I forgot my point. Um, it was a long intro. Yes, yes, I, for, I remembered it. It's because when someone follows an artist similar to you, there is a drop down of other similar mm-hmm. artists. If you've been on the same playlist as them, or same Spotify editorial as them, or they've listened to your track before, then they are still. You want to be in that drop down to be able to get the followers. They're in the. This person is in the mood for discovering new artists. Mm-hmm. And you are now linked with that person. So so if you go and follow, say, Maddie on Instagram, chances are I'll be in the drop down. I hope I'm in the drop down. Yeah. <laughs> but if I haven't, interesting point, though, if I have been slacking on Instagram and not posting anything, mm-hmm. then it will not recommend me, which is why you have to stay in with the algorithm, because mm-hmm. you want to be in that drop down. So if you are a country artist and you, I don't know, follow Gavin McGraw you want to be mm-hmm. in that suggested yeah. and then people are going to look and go I've listened to that artist before click or they might just click follow mm-hmm. but you need to be playing to the Instagram to even get there in the first place if you don't get the follow you want them to go to the profile have a glance and this is what we're talking about mm-hmm. we're not talking about you creating reels and TikToks and getting pushed out all of the time Fantastic if you are, but just because you're not doesn't mean that this advice doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I think that's such a good point as well about like, we're not telling you to become content creators. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to every day be like pulling out your phone, talking to camera. You don't have to every day be creating reels, which is like really funny and you want it to go viral. Be an artist, just document it in whatever way feels natural. So if you spend your day grabbing a coffee, getting on the train, going to the studio, doing a songwriting session with someone, like just document that and that can simply Mm -hmm. just be snap, snap. It doesn't have to be super creative angles, using a camera, doing voiceovers, just take a picture. And that's all you need to do. Feed content, press shots, whatever looks nice basically and Mm -hmm. show a bit of personality and maybe the narrative a bit in the caption because there's so much space for that. You can write a ridiculous amount. It's basically a novel. Uh, And then the real stuff can be just stuff you were going to post on TikTok anyway. It doesn't require too much time. And you don't need to be ridiculously consistent. Stories, yes. But feed, you can post once a month. Reels, you can post once every two weeks if you wanted to. Just consistently having stuff is all you need. It doesn't mean every single day. Agreed. Yeah. And it's interesting as well, because in 2018, we were telling people to have multiple interests and you have to, if you're into like cooking, then you should be putting cooking stuff up and things like that. Yeah. Still do that. But we've changed because the algorithm has changed and the, the way that people are using social media has changed. Therefore, you're not able to get people across and convert them to your music anymore. So if you have been watching our videos from 2018, 2019, wondering why we're not saying that anymore, that's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, as well, our, what we've said about feed content has changed. We mm-hmm. used to say, 
post like once a day, once every couple of weeks on the feed. Make sure it shows loads of personality. You don't need to do that anymore. That feed, because we have reels and it can be more raw and reels, that feed is for the more aesthetically pleasing stuff, the stuff which is a bit more of a brag, a bit more of showing who you are as an artist but doesn't need to be that personal Mm -hmm. because that's what the industry is going to look at and that's what, from first glance, someone should be able to guess your genre, guess guess what your brand is like, um, guess what your music's basically going to sound like from from a quick glance. So you can just post some press shots on there with some interesting captions and then Reels is where you can be more raw. And our opinion on that's changed massively because Reels has been introduced. It used to be... You really have to engage people on the feed. It doesn't matter so much now. It really doesn't. Mm. Just realised we've been hitting the table this whole podcast. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I was I was list- editing our last video. Oh, he's still um, doing that. Yeah, or get one of those mics. passionate. Or get one of those mics that are up in the air. Yeah, that yeah, might be a good mind. idea. Got to be careful. Apologies. Uh, shall we talk about the key bit of uh, Instagram then, which is obviously Reels now. Mm-hmm. The gift for artists is TikTok and Instagram reels instagram reels is is now phenomenal in terms of reach uh firstly i feel it gives people an easier way to share your content Mm. do you remember when you used to share in a video on instagram didn't even play the video in the story still image yeah and Mm. people had to click to even find out what it was nobody ever clicked so now people can actually share your content to their entire audience mm. and it plays the content. That mm. is so valuable, Better let alone TikTok. the algorithm. People can repost True. on TikTok, but no one really does that. They can share it with their friends. Mm. Uh, that's about Still it. Still hitting only one person rather Still than Instagram on... story where you can reach all your audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, one thing that I do think is really key about Reels is the only difference between Reels and TikTok is TikTok has their own separate trends which I think you should keep on TikTok. However, if it's a great video, do put it on Reels. Just make sure there's no watermark. Um, But you also want to ensure you're using text on Reels because if you have been integrated into the feed and you are on someone's page and they've just discovered you, they're probably not going to click it. Unless there's something really interesting going on, they're probably not going to click it. So you do need text. And Instagram literally creates the captions for you. You just click captions and it does it for you. It's incredible. So use the text. Put like little pieces of text which show people what the video is going to be about as well. And you're good to go. And a point we always make is with your text and with your captions, I know that the, the text is usually the lyrics of the song if you're singing or something like that. But for the caption, it's so important to to get people's people invested in that video via the caption. So what say about a year ago we did a lot of testing on captions on what was going to get people to click onto a video, watch the entire video and resonate with a track. Emotion was always, always the most important. Whether it is saying this song will make you feel like this or this is the people who are feeling like this. That was the most effective captions we came up with in terms of getting people to to watch the entire Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I I think that's kind of a point about all content. Make people feel stuff. Yeah. Uh, Whether it's funny and it makes them feel happy, whether it's emotional and makes them feel sad, or it's relatable and it makes them feel kind of nostalgic. Mm. Empowered. Yeah, there's, there's... That's what it is, because you want to create a relationship with someone. And so often you'll find story views go up because there's something in there that's just real and people just see something that's a little bit more real. One example I think of it is um, we love David Beckham. Oh, yeah. He's bloody great. And he put on his story or his feed just him playing with his dogs. Yeah. And it was like wow, this man is actually real. Yeah. Like, he, he just plays with his dogs for fun. And remember, you shared it with me, and, like, we share his content a lot. And that was a perfect example of someone that's supposed to be untouchable and is meant to have this certain image just showing a bit of personality. And his Instagram engagement is ridiculous. And with artists, you're so afraid of not being cool or not looking like uh, one of the established artists that doesn't have social media and doesn't engage with their fans that you actually end up losing the potential fans that you could have got from just being yourself. And uh, 
I, I think that's what artists should think about when they're posting. Experimenting with that kind of content as well can mm. really help you know what kinds of content you can do. People say, what should I post? Mm. Well, you start with everything. That helps then- mentally as well. Mentally. Yeah, it helps mentally. If, like, if you post stuff, just like experimenting mm. with a load of stuff, you just don't care anymore. Oh, right. True. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of like you drop that barrier. Yeah, and yeah. You, yeah I totally agree with that. Yeah. And also the fact that you realize what you like creating as well. Yeah. So so say uh, all artists put studio picks up and you think that that's what you want to do. And then one day you like put a video of your dog doing a trick. <laughs> Suddenly... Your dog doing a trick is actually what you enjoy putting up and you can put it up regularly and people are engaging with it. Suddenly you've got your Instagram content of those two or three things mm-hmm. that you're regularly putting up and then you can improve on that. And before you know it, then you've got a huge amount of story views. Mm-hmm. Uh, so finally, you've got the Instagram algorithm for reels. And I think that is still the case of getting watch time. Mm -hmm. So you have to get people to the very end. You've got to stop people from scrolling. And then they've got to be able to watch to the very, very end. That's what Instagram wants you to do and stay on the platform. So then they can show them an ad when they scroll. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, watch time doesn't actually necessarily mean someone clicked on the video and watched it. Mm -hmm. If they are scrolling on their feed, they pause, they watch it without the sound on. That will still count as watch time Mm -hmm. because... If there's captions on it, they may be reading it. So, again, like we said, use text as much as you can because that could be the thing that increases your watch time. Then to be able to get found by the right people is simply time and uploading. It will work out using its algorithm what type of content you are. You can use hashtags. Hashtags help, but I'd say they only help by about 10%. I'd say the the algorithm does most of it so you can upload without the hashtags if you can't think of anything you wanted to put and then as you continue to upload reels it learns what your content is it could learn by your fifth reel what all of your content is go back to your first reel and send that one to go viral so don't worry about the possibility that you've only got 10 views on your first reel i should delete it or i should quit because if you continue, then all of your content is going to be helped by that. Mm. Yeah. I'm done. Cool. Good place to end it. Yes. Hope you found that useful. Hope that you can change your Instagram. You can work on using those tips and get some followers, get some views, get some engagement. And we'll see you in the next one. Cool. <laughs>